Hello my friends, Takuyi here, and welcome to a Hearts of Iron 4 video, except this time we're going to be featuring the Arms Against Tyranny DLC. That's right, baby, we have early access, and so that means we're going to be able to dive in and having a lot of fun. Now, what I had done is I had placed a poll on my community page to ask you, what Nordic nation should we be playing first? And by a massive, I mean massive margin, uh, it was Finland. With, of course, the man, the myth, the legend, the new mustache man, Pear. I'm going to call you only Pear because I feel like if I try to say the rest of your name, I'm going to start having my furniture float in the rest of my room. And before we really go ahead and jump into things here, there's a couple things about Finland and other nations that we're going to need to explain here from the get-go. First off, I hold my mouse over here over my leader. You can see that there is a personal agenda that is in this, which is a rather interesting thing. We're going to go into that and explain that in a second once we actually load up the game. But there's a whole different kind of balance balance of power system that we're going to have to manage. The Sisu Spirit also, as you may be able to see, is significantly weaker than it is in the base game without the DLC, and the reason for that is because Sisu is now something that can be modified to be made stronger or weaker depending upon your actions. And oh boy, am I going to Sisu. I'm going to Sisu all over the Soviet's face. Does that work? I don't know if that actually works. Anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into things. Beautiful. Simply beautiful. The ball sack of Sweden is looking ever so proud. Now, first things first, let's go ahead and look and see what this DLC even introduces in the first place. Of course, the thing that everyone wants to talk about is the fact that there is a actual focus tree now for Finland and other nations, and it looks to be a fairly extensive one. I mean, we're talking multiple different alternate history paths. There is a communist side with, uh, well, actually, this is revolution, I guess, and it goes more towards communism or democracy, depending upon what you do. You have the classic Finnish neutrality side that this is the historical one. And then you have the right wing policies to go down the fascist side, all of which have some very, very interesting things that you can do here from the looks of it. But oh man, is this a broad tree that goes all the way across? Where do we even begin? Well, of course, with the classic thing, politics. Finland doesn't need an economy. <laughs> that comes later. John, I know first things first, let's go ahead and build ourselves some infrastructure and then simultaneously get uh, just a couple civvies going. Just a couple civvies. Actually, no, one mill. We're going to replace one of these with a mill just to get a little bit of production going in here so I can start producing some equipment. And then going back to the focus, I think that the thing that we're going to do here today is that we are going to go fascist. And I say fascist because there is something that I found in here that potentially, depending on luck, and I've seen it in multiple playthroughs, how it can change depending on what happens. But if we play things just right, we will potentially be able to break the entire game and truly get all of Scandinavia united behind the true Nordic power. Finland. F F uh, Finland are the real Vikings. Yes. Which means right-wing policies. The left are nothing but agents of foreign powers. They would sell out their homeland in a heartbeat if it gained them favor with Moscow. If our nation is to prosper and survive, we must turn to the parties and organizations of the right. Now you can see here, public trust moves by 15% towards the left, towards the side of low public trust. What is that? Well, the thing that Finland has here in the beginning of the game is it has a public trust system, a balance of power system. Except unlike before, where it provides just basic bonuses that go down either side, this is actually something that you are going to want to maintain because the lower the trust, the more pain that you are going to suffer. Though, if you go low trust, this is going to allow you to flip your government or rather the person that is in charge of your government, which I like this, you know, as a balance of power, this actually makes more sense because you want to try and actually boost and maintain this pretty high and you need to fulfill the political goals of your leader in order to not have yourself degrade yourself in the eyes of the public. Research wise, we're gonna go with the classic setup that you know we have to. And then we have one free military factory. Go ahead and slap that on guns. It doesn't really matter right now. We also need one of our dockyards probably producing convoys potentially needed for trade. Really depends on what we need. And then all these divisions, nah, nah. We don't need them. Finland doesn't need an army. We have snowmen. Do you want to build a Finn man? Doesn't have to be a Finn man. It could simply be a snowman with a gun. That, that's basically the Finnish people. The other thing that we have to check before things really start in the beginning of the game is that we need to check out the new international market system. So here is the way that this thing works. You can buy and sell equipment, which is a hugely valuable thing that you can do now so that you're not just trapped by the restrictions of lend leases so many other nations, but there is another restriction. And that is unless you start with those trade deals in the beginning of the game or you're playing multiplayer, Flavor, flavor, play, player, player, player. Unless you're playing multiplayer, you won't actually be able to sell to all nations. You will only be able to sell with the majority of which actually share your ideology. So like if I go over here to United Kingdom as an example, and I try to go and ask for market access, th they're not going to give it to me. Why? Because their opinion of me is low. We have no trade influence. And like they're, 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 we're not the same ideology. They don't want to be able to sell me guns. 
But in my case, I just deleted my entire army and got a bunch of guns in the beginning of the game where no other armies in the game have guns. So here's what I figured out. In the beginning of the game, when you try to cheese something like in the case of a civil war, you normally try to delete all of your guns right before the civil war breaks out, right? But now because of this DLC, you're gonna be able to delete your entire army as usual. And instead of deleting all of your guns, I can now go over here to the international market. I can go to sell equipment add equipment to market, and oh, look at this. Here's all of my equipment that I don't need. Guns, support equipment, everything else. We're gonna add all these tanks and everything. And simultaneously, the price, I'm going to jack up the price to as high as I can potentially get for this, which is going to give me a stupid amount of civilian construction power. Go ahead and hit add, wait for a couple days for this to all pan out, and oh wait, where's the other thing I need to do? Market access options, auto accept purchase request. There we go. Now, anytime someone tries to buy something, oh, look at this, my guns are disappearing from the market. What's going on? What is happening? Well, if I go back to sell equipment, you can see that Mexico, Yugoslavia, Portugal, Brazil, Turkey, all these different powers are now buying my equipment. And what does that do? Well, it's going to give me economic capacity surplus, which as that builds, which we're just going to wait a little bit of time here, you can see that it's going to boost my production by a good at least 25%, or in this case, because I have export focus, I get an additional 10%, which boosts that up to 27%. So my construction will automatically be boosted by 27% while I am selling all of this gear. There we go, it hit. Now, if I go over here to construction, and I check on the status of this, check this out, I'm building this infrastructure, which despite only having four factories that should be capable of producing just 20, when you add all the additional bonus that I'm getting, including the extra economic capacity surplus, this means I'm producing 53.04, which means I'm going to build all of my buildings much faster. So if you have any stupid cheap equipment in the beginning that you're not really going to use, like support equipment or artillery or anything, if you're not necessarily going aggressive and need that immediately, you can sell it and boost your economy massively to be able to produce things. It's the new viable strategy instead of deleting everything. But there we go, our first focus is done. We have 100 extra political power and now we can use that to go over here and political advisor, get a fascist demagogue. We're gonna need that as quickly as possible. And from there, we have two options, either discredit the democratic system to try and peacefully transfer or prepare for, for a military coup. And you already know that we're cheesing the entire system as is, so why not? And as time goes on, I'm able to go over here to the international market and just, hey, look, I'm kind of running out of uh, uh, bonuses here. Why don't I sell all the other equipment that I've been producing this entire time? I'll just keep on doing that as I go. It doesn't matter. As I put it out there, it gets bought. There we go, prepare military coup is done, wonderful. And immediately we can hit the next focus, which is a fascist regime. With the national parliament under the influence of the military, we can now forge a regime based on strength, honor, and loyalty to Finland. That is going to give me 100 political power, it's going to boost fascism, and it's gonna give me a whole bunch of bonuses here and start a civil war. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. As you can see, the public trust in my leader is, um, uh, no one trusts him at all. Keep on moving to sell all my equipment as I go. And the day before the civil war, okay, we have one day left, go over here to logistics. Look, we have 27 guns, that's it. Really, it's not much of a waste if I just go and delete these right now. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. Delete that, delete that, we don't need any of it, boom. We are gonna be starting off the Civil War completely 100% fresh, and here's why. Civil War breaks out, a fascist regime that is done, and now immediately we have 100 extra political power that is going to allow us to just recruit some little cavalry here like right off the get-go, okay, okay? Here's the other thing, here's the other thing. Check this out. See how I'm missing a bunch of guns? If I go over here to International Market where I've been selling a bunch of stuff, um, I could I could cancel the contract and gain all this equipment that I've been selling back. Oh, oh, what? What? Oh, that's so, that's so weird. That's so weird that I all of a sudden got back all of these guns. Hmm, hmm, I'm gonna get everything back again? You don't say. Hmm, amazing. All the guns that we were selling on the market, we have back. So, okay, while we build those units, now we can start to do other things. A fascist regime. No, we're gonna go and enhance Southern infrastructure. Just get ourselves built up a little bit economically. That is fine. Eight units of this. I can go ahead and pump all these out, no problem. And I think, do they start with any, I don't know if the North starts with any mill factories whatsoever, which means that they're not gonna be able to actually do anything. But there we go. There's 20% training, which means I can start spawning all these out. One here, one here. You know how it works. We're gonna set them all along the line. And now immediately I can just go over here and start boom, 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 snake my way up. They're not gonna have any units to be able to produce anything. So every single one of these points, we're just gonna be able to go up here and seize. And here we go, just move rapidly up. We'll be able to take out everything. It does not matter. We'll just be able to start crushing everything. 
Also, at the same time, I cannot forget because this is something that is definitely going to hurt me here. Okay, so our public trust is currently falling. The reason that it is falling is because our guy cannot have any kind of support for democratic or communist ideologies that is more than 9%. We can't. So what we're going to need to do is entice the masses. We're going to need to boost support for ourselves here as quickly as we can. And as we do this to boost fascism, that is going to drop this to 9%, which should slow uh, 40 days. Is that going to hurt me? It's kind of going to hurt me. Okay, well, you know what? In addition to that, we are simultaneously going going to now I want to launch anti-democratic raids, but I can't do that just yet. Okay. Well, either way, Finland gets annexed. They have no guns whatsoever. And with that, boom, it's done. Civil war over. We cheesed it. Go ahead and get dispersed industry because that's going to be pretty valuable. And the next step after this is as soon as we complete Southern infrastructure, we're going to start beelining down our path here to work on the Nordic countries. Well, I say that, but we actually have a hundred political power right now. So potentially speaking, what I should do is I should do a war economy. Yeah. Yeah. Immediately 1936 June war economy. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Ooh, very nice stuff. Very, very nice stuff. Let's see, there's enhanced southern infrastructure. Is this still kind of falling? It's still falling. It's slow, but you know, it's fine. We're only going to lose like 2.8 more support. It doesn't really matter. Instead, that means that we have locked out the rest of the focus tree here. The only options that we have are right wing policies. And to be honest, to be honest, um, you can either join the Axis immediately and get some industrial cooperation, which is pretty nice, like minus 10% consumer goods and two mill factories. That's good. Oh, Right, that's also something that I should mention. The economic system has completely changed. No longer will you be able to easily have negative consumer goods. Now instead, everything is relative. Even though I'm on war economy and I have 20% consumer goods, I don't actually get down to 5% consumer goods by having my minus 15% bonus here. No, instead it is reduced to 17% because the lower that is, the more of a factor you're going to need to reduce your goods. I don't know if I'm even properly explaining it. Basically, it gets harder and harder to reduce your consumer goods the lower they become. Either way, taxes? Nah, nah, nah. Look, look, I don't need a mustache, man. My guy is clean, even though he looks kind of like a CW villain, to be honest. So finish supremacy in the North. While the other nations of our region squabble and negotiate their subjugation at the hands of greater powers, we alone can offer an alternative. Under our leadership, we can lead our peoples to victory against any foe who may threaten us. This is going to allow us to start to influence the nations around us, which is something that can either work very well or not at all. I've seen it go both ways in multiple tests that I've run. But either way, by doing this, this is going to start increasing fascism in all the nations around us. So let's do it. At the same time, I will need to boost my political power here as much as possible because I need 150 for once this launches. There we go. With Finnish supremacy in the north done, that means that now we are going to be... Oh, wait, hold on. Is this still dropping? It's still stable. We're... Oh, damn it. I'm in the middle. I'm in the middle. That's not what I... Okay. Uh... I would prefer to be up here for higher stability, but you know what? It's fine. It's fine. We'll fix that later. Either way, national focus time. Let's go ahead and start boosting our economy then. Go ahead and get ourselves some civilian factories, and this is going to boost our infrastructure by 20% for 730 days, which is huge. As the world becomes increasingly industrialized, white Finland must keep pace if it has become a major player on the global stage. The investments we make in our heavy industry will not only create jobs and stimulate the economy, but also provide the resources necessary to meet the challenges of the future, like murdering Soviets. But while that is playing out, the first thing that we need to do immediately immediately is use our 150 political power to start boosting politics in other regions. Now, you can start boosting fascism in any one of these by promoting ideology, but to be honest, I don't think that that's necessary to do down in Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania, unless I was beelining down that path anyway. I want the Nordic countries. So let's do this. Go ahead and promote ideological rallies in Denmark, promote them in Norway, and promote them in Sweden. Let's go ahead and get that done. Make sure that we have these going. And yes, Sweden is boosting fascist influence. So is Norway. And now Denmark. Wonderful. That's exactly what we want. Is it going to cost us a lot of political power? Maybe, but you know what? It's worth it. It is going to be worth it. Because while all this is going, what I'm going to need is a ton more of this cavalry. Just things that are very fast as a just in case, and you'll see what I mean. League of Nations embargo resolution? Eh, yeah, it's the right thing to do. Get myself some stability. That's fine. That's fine. And there we go. Free military factory. As soon as we have that, that means we can go over here and get towed artillery. Ah, yes, and this is the other thing. I should have been doing this from the very beginning. Military industrial organization. You can see this symbol that is now next to things on all of your equipment. Some countries have special companies associated with certain types of equipment. So if I start producing this, it gives me specific bonuses, such as in this case, 3% production efficiency if I utilize the construction, or not construction, MIO to do so. As time goes on and we research and build more things using the companies, this is going to allow us to unlock certain features of that company, which can boost the equipment if we use our army experience to get it. Something that can be very valuable depending on how you want to build your country. Specialists are going to be a strong thing in this game now. 
All right, there's industrial development. Next step on here, uh, the Geniskosi Power Plant. We will build a power plant in Janowski to provide reliable energy for the electric smelter of the Koloschoki nickel mine and fuel the growth of the Petsamo area, which shall turn and spur an economic development in northern White Finland. That's right, we're going to discover electricity. The Finnish never needed electricity before because everything was white. It wasn't dark. Okay, I'll shut up now. <laughs> also, I'm realizing this. The faction that we formed with this is literally the Finnish Supremacy League. <laughs> <laughs> ah, beautiful. anti commentary pack. Sure, of course I will join that. I don't like the communist. Yeah, they mess with my jawline. Next up on here, another civilian factory and more steel. Expand the Imatra hydropower plant. This is going to be valuable now, but as we develop more technology, this is a thing with Finland. It may have a fairly weak economy in the beginning, but check this out. The longer the game goes on, the more powerful it gets. Power from the dams, it's going to modify your consumer goods more, more construction speed, more civilian factories. You're going to get more stuff specifically for your Railways, your infrastructure building, everything is going to get way stronger. Let's see. I think the last focus that we're going to do over on the side here, at least for now, is the Bank of Alant. Get ourselves some political power, and simultaneously, we're going to boost up our stability here a little bit, which is going to be valuable. In the meantime, we are trying to train up as many little forces as we can. Yes, we are building a ton of shitty cavalry. I know, I know, but they're actually going to end up being useful, sort of. Okay, it, 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 it'll, it. Don't worry about it, because as soon as we have this focus, that's going to give us the political power to have 200, and then we can get our primary military staff member, the OG himself, Mannerheim. Plus 15% division defense, that's going to be beautiful. Plus that 0.4 army experience is going to be wonderful. Now, even though we could do more stuff on this economic side, we don't really need any of this for now. The big thing that we need to primarily focus on over here is beelining down our political path. Finnish Legion of Honor, which is going to give us some units. Tactical Wargaming Department, which is going to increase our generals. And then Finnish Irredentism, which is going to increase our ability to attack things. It doesn't matter what we do, so let's just go ahead and get the Legion of Honor. And how are things going over here? Yes, the entire time we are building large amounts of fascism in Denmark, in Sweden, in Norway. This is what I want to see. Beautiful. Also, as a tidbit, you can see some of the ideas that Norway has here, for example. The broken gun. Uh, they, they don't want to fight anyone. That's not going to help them. So they destroyed all their guns and they're printing massive amounts of money. Gee, I can't imagine that that's going to go horribly. Mm, I forgot this. I have to research the Air Force in the beginning. If I had not gotten the fascist guy from the very beginning, I could have used 150 political power before the Civil War broke out and I would have gotten like four free technologies as well as 6,000 equipment from the Germans, which is a very valuable thing. But I decided to go with the safer route of beelining down things here so I wouldn't have to worry about my political power and do this as fast as possible. But you know, it's fine. I can show off my research and what happens when you use your... Or MIOs to research things faster because that is the thing. You'll get like 10% bonus research. And then on top of that, you're going to get funds from this that you can invest in further points. Only downside is it costs political power to do so, which does kind of suck if you don't really produce much. Ah, ah, yes, yes. I got my elite divisions, the Cunia Legiona. Cunia, Cunia Legiona. Oh my God, I'm gonna have so many Finnish people in the comments right now. Basically, this is the Legion of Honor, right? These are the elites of Finland. There's Tactical Wargaming Department. Next up on here, Finnish Irredentism. Yes, go ahead and get that done. And let's see, it's October 1st, 1937. We have, what, 44? Okay, you know, that's perfect. That's a perfect timing. Here's what we're gonna do. We're going to use some of our political power to start improving relations. We need to do that as quickly as possible here. So let's do that with all powers and get that done. We need to get up to plus 50% relations in here as quickly as possible. Because there's finished irredentism. We cannot choose the next thing after this, I believe. Oh, no, we can. Keepers of the North. But we don't want to do this yet. We don't want to time that just yet. Instead, we're going to go over and do something like here. Increase military budget. The nation's security is of utmost importance. By increasing the military funding, the defense forces will be well-equipped and better prepared to withstand any potential threats, which is going to give me boosts for all of my equipment and simultaneously more military factories. That's exactly what I want. Because now that Sweden has plus 50 relations, that should unlock an option over here in decisions, which is to pressure the Swedish government. As soon as we do so, we're going to lose 0.25 political power per day, yes, but simultaneously, we're going to pressure them. And there's a chance, a chance, mind you, that they will A, flip fascist and also be join us or maybe they'll just join us and not flip fascist I i've seen it go either way hopefully the best outcome is that they go and join us you want sweden among all things in here as quickly as you can i don't know if there's other factors that go and affect it here yet it's going to require a lot more testing but this is what i have seen so far 
And here, after researching all that stuff for our aircraft, we have unlocked traits for our MIO. You can see we built up a trait point over here. We're getting a lot of funding each day, which is nice. And from here, we can use to increase our reliability or no, I haven't done modernize the industry, so I can't get production output, even though that seems really nice, actually. Okay, well, we'll get this one here from the beginning. That's okay. Aha, there it is, a new Swedish government. After unsuccessful negotiations with our ambassadors and under great pressure from the media and population, the former leader of the Swedish government has decided to resign from his post and call for new elections. As expected, these elections have been won by a party who is much closer to our interest, the NSAP with Robin Bulland at the helm. Wonderful. Zverik is now a thing, which means... I can go over here and can I invite to faction? No, no, they're just fascist. Wait, hold on, no, I'm fascist. Can I not do this? Did they did they go and pursue like great neutral for Okay, hold on, they did. Hold on. Is that gonna invalidate? Should that not have invited them to my faction? It probably should have. Wait, hold on. What the hell? Okay, with Sweden down, that means we can go ahead and launch Keepers of the North. As soon as we do that, let's see, what does it say? Let's see, White Finland is going to demand control of every Nordic state that is controlled by an ally. Hopefully, we'll be able to get Sweden into the faction before that. Let's see what happens. At the same time, we will start preparing to put pressure on the Norwegian government and see what happens there. Ah, there it is. Invite to faction. They finally got rid of that, uh, that neutrality thing. Okay, invite to faction. Boom. Sweden is in the faction. That is exactly what I want. And then let's go and take all of our forces, finally assign some commanders, go ahead and get Mannerheim in charge there, get ourselves an army. Oh my God, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I forgot, look at this, look at this. Look at how many amazing generals Finland has from the beginning. Look at these traits. They all have like engineer, winter specialist, fortress buster, ranger bonuses, mountaineer bonuses, which, oh my God, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. The guy I'm using right now is ranger and winter specialist, which is just simply awesome. They also get veteran Jaeger, a whole bunch of them, which is going to increase their ability to get specialist traits. Beautiful. Go ahead and take all these guys, put them over here on the border with Norway, and then, yeah, we should be good from there. A new Norwegian government! Hey! Okay, okay, they flip too. They flip too. All right, let's see. Could I invite them? I can. Yes, yes, yes. Invite to faction. Wonderful! Yes! Yes! Okay, that's actually incredibly lucky. I've done multiple games of this where I get Sweden, and then I lose both Denmark and Norway. That's actually incredibly lucky. Okay, final one on here. Pressure Danish... Oh, wait, I don't have the political power yet. Okay, we're going to need to wait a little bit of time. And so here's what we'll do. We will create a little bit of a pocket around here, and we will wait to potentially see if the, uh, if the Danes decide to uh, refuse us. And the final one on here, pressure the Danish government. Let's go ahead and see what they decide. The awesome thing about this is that unlike in the case when you're justifying on a country, that none of this is increasing uh, world tension, right? None of this is. You're just threatening people to change their government. That's all. Let's see, will they accept? Denmark joins our faction. Okay, wait, okay, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So they joined. Further, the Danish military remain active, staffed by Danish officers and ranks, answering only to the Danish government. However, Thorvald Stoning is willing to discuss mutual defense. So Denmark and Iceland joined the Finnish Supremacy League. So they did that. But then also simultaneously, they decided to remain democratic. That's unfortunate. Okay, let's see. We timed this in such a way that Keepers of the North is going to finish in 10 days. I could have done this earlier to potentially maybe minimize the risk because there's always the risk that Denmark just goes ahead and leaves the faction. If they do, it is what it is. Yes, we managed to do it. Okay, all right, they're sticking with us. And just like that, 9th of February, 1938, we have all of Scandinavia. And you know what that means, everyone? You know what that means? Decisions proclaim Nordic unity. Everything becomes a core. All of it is mine. We form the Nordic Empire like that. No world tension, no anything. The unification of the Nordics under Finland. The dream is realized. Absolutely wonderful. And now we can go down here to Academic Karelian Society. For over a decade, the Organization of Intellectuals and Students in the University of Helsinki have been increasingly influential, and their core goals align well with our own, being the pursuit of improving Finland in line with our history. Yes, because all of this is Finland. It always was always will be. That means that right as the Anschluss of Austria happens, we have a grand total of 26 mills. We have a good 66 civilian factories and all of these dockyards. Oh my God, our industry. We have easily become one of the biggest nations in the game just like that. This is so broken. Now we have 26 mils, and that means we can even start producing more anti-air and early truck, which yes, that's right, everyone. If you haven't seen this yet, in the new research, you, most nations that didn't have like a truck before in the beginning, there's now a earlier version of a truck. 
with so at least in the beginning you're able to do some motorized they're a lot weaker they're like slower and whatnot but you know what it, it, it's still something that is very valuable because holy crap we have now have all this population and we can just set ourselves up here and begin training and getting our troops ready and since we're making a beeline down here to intellectual elite it's important that we go ahead and get a spy agency going this is going to be exceptionally valuable because we're going to be able to start using that against the soviets manterva means that we get the spy agency of petidos i have no idea what that means but don't worry we can use our spies to indoctrinate our workers that's right danish field laborers no no they're just poor finnish people everyone else here are just discount fins you all know that right there it is first operative we got that let's see what do we have well groomed uh demolition you know what we'll take well groomed that's that's fine that's fine we'll go ahead and take that one and we'll put you to build an intel network in leningrad we'll go ahead and get that done also intelligence agency we're gonna need to start upgrading you suicide pills yes what happens when you can't get your proper finished sauna on take over the suja 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 god i'm gonna get roasted in the comments for this okay it's an auxiliary force of reservists who can be called upon to help defend the nation in time of crisis to bring the organization under control we could utilize it to indoctrinate thousands to our cause yes more recruitable population and every percentage of recruitable population factor we get considering our base is now a grand total of 17.8 million is only going to get bigger yeah when finland is actually capable of pumping out an air force because it has a massive industry beautiful hmm hmm yeah you think we got a plan here military promotions our military officer have served the nation with great honor and dedication it's time to be rewarded the best of them for their part in saving us oh my god we can recruit all these guys super cheaply i mean i'm already getting this but it's giving me so much experience for my soldiers what our guys are gonna get only stronger oh <laughs> we can recruit so many men now oh uh, you don't even have to do the indonesian exploit you can just get all the manpower by throwing swedes onto the battlefield i do like the taste of them meatballs soviets huh and the more research that i do the more things that i get the higher my trust goes the higher my trust goes the more bonuses that i'm going to be able to get here mm, yep i'll take that elusive gentleman okay yep 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 give me more bonuses for my uh, agency I'd, I'd like more i'd like more thank you we need to build as much up as we can yes and another research slot okay we got this we got this finnish space marines are on their way there we go second collaboration government activate activate my brothers yes all right, there goes King Zog submitting to Italy. Things are getting ready to break out. Okay, okay, okay. I do not know, technically speaking, if uh, the Germans are actually going to go after me. I haven't, I haven't actually play tested that far here yet to know whether or not that's going to be happening. So let's, uh, let, let, let's start to get things a little bit prepared. I think. So yes, next, Sumin Ma Mavio Mavoi Mavoi Ma Mavoi. Damn it, I hate this tree so much. It's powerful. Don't get me wrong, but it's making my brain feel like it wants to melt. Time to embrace our capabilities. Yes, the capability of being Finnish, which is just going to give us even more bonuses, more army experience, more cold acclimatization, more everything. I love how now you can actually upgrade your equipment, and when you upgrade your equipment, this means you can rename it, which is simply beautiful. That's right, baby. Every Finnish soldier is equipped with a finisher. <laughs> Agent captured. No. Do we complete the other stuff? We base. Uh, no, we haven't. Okay. Um, that's all in progress. All right. This is going to take some time. It's fine. Extra refresher exercises. Even more recruitable population. Yes. Tensions are rising in Europe, and we need to get ready. So, okay, since we want to get ready, and we now actually have the industry to be able to defend ourselves, so we're going to go ahead and build up some supply. Can we do anything about the rail network? Can we actually get that done? No. Oh, wait, no. Do, whoa. Hold up. Did that disappear? Do I no longer have the option to be able to reinvigorate their railroad network? No, I don't. What? Yeah, well, at least it's still going to finish by November. All right, you know what? That's fine. That's fine. We'll go ahead and do that. That it's, it, it is what it is. Ah, there it goes. Germany going after Poland. All right, that's happening. It is, uh, are, are they going to go after me? Can I, can I get a non-aggression pact here with them? No. Oh, wait, no. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Maybe, maybe if I increase relations. Whoa, already the Soviets demand Carl, Carl, what, really, really that fast. Hold up. I thought I was going to come later. Um, oh, oh crap. Oh crap. Oh crap. I was not, I was not ready for this. Quick, how long do I have? I have 12 days. Okay, okay. Get get your forces over here as quickly as possible. I'm not going to finish with this crap until November, at least. Quick, next thing up on here. Uh, army, logistics, just less attrition, please. Uh, it's a cold front. Next up on here, Jaeger movement. The Finnish High Command has put forward a proposal to reinvigorate the defense forces by promoting officers with previous Jaeger experience. Yes. Four, three, two. Two, one. Let them come if they dare. Okay, here it is. Nordic Empire rejects the Soviet demands. Are they going to go after me? Is it the Winter War? Is it going to happen? Or are they too scared? 
You chicken? Huh? You chicken Soviets? Really? There it is. They finally launched the Winter War, November 16th, 1939. Cut them to pieces. This is going to grant his mobilization speed of plus 85%, additional recruitable population, less winter attrition, more defense on core territory. Oh my God. Pushing back the Soviets and occupying Leningrad will allow us to demand peace negotiations. Being also in control of Mermens, Onega, or Nets will enable us to demand those states as territorial concessions from them. Okay, hold up. Wait a minute. Hold on. Stir anti Soviet sentiment in Carlia. Well, hell, don't mind if I do. Oh, hey, Soviets. You, uh, you, 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 you kind of just thrown yourselves at me here? Hmm. Hmm. Kind of a, kind of, kind of a weird thing to do. Seems like you got a lot of uh, equipment to burn here. Our snipers are proving highly effective. Ooh, this is one of the new events. Reports have come in that our snipers are proving highly efficient at fighting enemy forces and treating in our forests. This is a good opportunity for war propaganda as the term white death has been popping up among enemy soldiers, referring to the dangers posed by Finland's nature and people. And we could pin this to a certain person to rally the population if one happens to prop up. Uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, no, we should hand out more arms to the hunters. Yes, snipers will become more deadly. Send volunteers request from Italy. Sure, Italy. Thank you. I greatly appreciate that. We're only managing to contest air over here. <laughs> All right, I may be producing an Air Force to actually fight against the Soviets, but I'm not exactly able to do much. I'm going to lose a whole bunch of trains here, I'm pretty sure. Also, let's stop all of our stuff from going in through here. German right declares one in the Netherlands. Yep, that was bound to happen. Okay, 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 that happens. Trade-wise, I'm, 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 I'm not getting all the rubber that I that I want here. It's like it's, that's going to be a little bit dangerous. Yes, the White Death. As wars come to the Nordic Empire, many hunters, militiamen, and shooting club marksmen have taken up arms to fight off their oppressors. The Finnish Sisu flows through them as they stem off enemy attacks, utilizing the Finnish nature to their advantage. Yes. <laughs> In the meantime. The Soviets are just throwing themselves at me. Wait, what do you mean? Is this a naval invasion? No. Oh, wait, what? No. Are you launching a naval invasion? Simo Aya accredited as the White Death. We should propagate tales of this modern hero. The White Death is the embodiment of Finland, not some person. Ooh, we gains We Are the White Death, which grants winter attrition minus 20 and attack against major countries for 20 days. Okay. No, wait, the manpower. Ooh, oh, do I want this? No, we're going to take the more bonuses. We're going to take the more bonuses. We don't need that. Let them launch their attacks. They'll fail. They'll fail. We're defending everywhere. <laughs> The, more, the Germans might be doing fine over here, but the more that the Soviets throw themselves at me, the, the more resources that they lose because they're all just attritioning themselves to death over here and there's no way that they can actually maintain that. The White Death continues to stalk his prey. Despite numerous close calls and false claims, Sima Aya is unscratched and will continue fighting for as long as required of him. The White Death embraces our enemies. Oh, that's beautiful. The dancing ban. No, we're not going to ban dancing. Have some fun and dance on their corpses. Just let them bleed out. Just continuously let them attrition themselves against me. This is beautiful. How many have they lost so far? 244,000. It's only been a couple months and I barely lost any. This is so stupidly strong. Oh my God. Salvaged and retooled. Are you, how many bonuses are we going to stack here? Modify finished army by equipment capture ratio plus 30%, 30% less penalties for resources. Are you kidding me? Oh my God. And I already have my doctrine maxed out. It, it's, it's that simple. We're able to do this so fast because of how many bonuses that we've stacked in here. Look at this. Minus 25%, minus 10% every single time we do this. It only costs us 65. Holy crap. Finland is strong in this game. The cold front. We take even less less damage from their casts. Are you kidding? We just stack it. We're just stacking effects. It's just so much. Soviet operative captured. Uh, yeah, yeah. How about Modi tactics? Modify Finnish army by even less organization loss when moving. More recon bonuses. More attacking speed. Are you kidding me? <laughs> this is so strong. Winter warfare, even less winter attrition. Oh my God. How many bonuses? Guys, Finnish army. How many have we stacked in here so far? This is ridiculous. The Finnish army so far gets 10% army gain, 10% mobilization speed, 10% org. Oh my God. Odd. Here's what we're going to do. We're just going to steadily move forward then. You know, you know, that, that seems like a fine, fine idea. Yep, this is fine. This is absolutely fine. I see nothing wrong here at all. And of course, you know, a final collaboration government on the Soviets. That seems fine. And now we just snake away. Yeah, yeah. Our infantry moves so fast, it doesn't even matter. Oh my God, we're just wiping. How many is that? In rapid order. That is one and a half million. And I have lost 10,000. Oh my God, that KD ratio. 
I'm not even at the max level. I'm at high trust. If I go even higher, I'm going to get even more attack and defense on my core territory and less attrition. Yeah, baby. And now we unlock the ability of long range patrol companies. Long range patrols will become an essential element in the recon and sabotage efforts of the Finnish army. Let's do it. Uh, <laughs> they're still throwing them. I've killed off so many of their units. They're still trying <laughs> to attack me. Oh, how many is that? How many is that? Uh, Two million now. Okay. Um, November 1940. It's barely been a couple months. Nice. I'm going to say that it's been a year, but y you know what I mean. There we go. Even more surrounded. And honestly, it, but it feels like I'm not even really putting much of a dent in their forces. Like I, I don't outnumber them yet, but honestly, we're, we're just absolutely crushing them. And now unite the Sami people, which decreases my winter attrition even more, gives me even more supply bonuses. There we go. Come on. Come on. We're pushing. We're pushing into Leningrad. We're going to take this thing. There we go. Come on. Come on. Break in. Surround and destroy. January 1941. We are, we are making pushes. Yes, there is Leningrad surrounded. Okay, hold on. We have so many divisions here. Will they overload it? Yep, they're just putting more divisions into the stockpile. That's what I like to see. Leningrad is literally a killing ground for the White Death. We are destroying every single motorized unit. We are destroying every tank unit. We are destroying every single thing that they have. And in doing so, we are quite literally collecting everything. There's Finnish radio intelligence, which means we move on and we now get two focuses. Either Sissy, which is going to increase our long range patrol attack even more, or we get armor bonuses. Uh, honestly, you know, we've been doing all this with infantry. Our light infantry sissy troops are wrecking them. Wrecking them, I tell you. Three million losses. It's been a year. It's been a year. I've lost 31,000. Oh my God. This is so dumb. Honestly, I think they're they're out of people to reinforce Leningrad. Um, Yeah, I, I think that they're actually basically out of troops. They're not reinforcing it with any sufficient numbers here now. It's only coming in one at a time. Yeah, I think that's it. All right, well, considering how many losses we've caused them, we um we almost outnumber them, and they still have to defend other borders. Plus, not to mention, we have uh, a full collaboration, right? Yep, it reduces the surrender limit by 30%, and we have 100% compliance. So you know what that means? It's time for us to push. I don't need national defense. I don't need any of this. We could just go, buddy. I didn't even get to use my multi tactics or anything else like that, which gives me so many bonuses in that state. Oh my God. Yeah, there goes uh, Germany after the Soviets, which means they're not going to have any troops on this border. We have been killing them for so much that, uh, well, to be honest, it doesn't really, really matter. Just push aggressive, aggressive. Go, 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 my Finnish brothers. There we go. Come on. We're right outside the gates of Moscow. Yes. There goes the Soviet Union just like that. Oh my God. That's the easiest it's ever been to take them down. Oh my God. God, Finland is powerful in the new DLC. Ha, 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 Germany. Sorry, Germany. No Liebensbrom for you. The only white things that are allowed this far are the white Finns. Get it? You see what I did there? Even though now it says we're actually the Nordic Empire. But uh, yeah, you know, we, we, were, we were able to claim all this territory and uh, get Finnish Russia as a 100% compliant puppet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, beautiful. You know what? We'll, we'll also go ahead and release Mongolia too. I think that is too fitting. That is that is simply too beautiful, my friends. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, you embargo me. Really? What did I do? What did I do except take all of Russia and super boost my industry? Holy crap. Truly the greatest honor legion now. Oh, wow. Hey, uh, mustache man. You could use a little clean shaving, I think. Let's go, my brothers. No. <laughs> Oh, Germany. Germany, why would you do this? Why would you throw away all of your men's lives? Oh, wait, no, I'm actually losing some manpower. Okay, uh, listen, every Finn do their part. I'm not even going to call in Russia because that way they can't actually attack me. <laughs> oh my God, you're still doing it. How many men have you thrown away at this point? Two million. It's been like two months. I quite literally can't mobilize fast enough. My manpower is just draining. Are you kidding me? All infantry gain even more heart attack and How? We're just developing Molotov cocktails. Germany, you threw away 3.3 million lives in like a year. In like a year. All right, come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't let them escape. Don't let them escape. There we go. There we go. Just just keep on. Keep on pushing in. Keep on pushing in. We're going to hold. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. We just need to push. There's so much. They're, they're still trying to attack me here. Why? All right, come on. Bigger pockets. Bigger pockets. Let's go. Yep, there goes Romania. Hey, hey. Okay, that's what I like to see. Yes. 
Yes, keep going. You thought that you could stop the Soviets, but were you able to stop every single Finnish person in the country? Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Let the blue wave spread across you. Bruh, this is just... Germany falls. A victory that the Nordic Empire will always remember. Yes, and with the fall of Germany, that means the only thing that remains is the pasta boy. Benito Mussolini is deposed. Yes, Italy fractures into a civil war. And there it goes. Germany falls. Finland reigns supreme. And there it is. All is right in the world. Um, Yeah, the German Reich actually still exists. And uh, <laughs> the mustache man is still in charge. Except he's a puppet of Finland now. Yeah, yeah. How does that feel? I think we've established the true evil of this world. Finnish Yugoslavia. And with that, I think um, I, I, I think that we're done. I think that we're done here. Everyone, thank you very much for watching. The new DLC, holy crap, it is so much fun. It is so cool what it is that you're able to do with all this equipment and now actually if i wanted to if i even wanted to boost my industry over the course of this i could have been selling all these extra guns that i was getting from the soviets out to like the germans or something but i really wanted to be able to take out the germ uh, the the uh, the soviets myself and my god are the finnish powerful i think i had fun playing the sweden focus tree when i was doing the uh, the multiplayer game but the finnish tree is just ridiculously powerful really the greatest limitation about finland is its manpower as i've said before so if you can fix that you're golden and so if you manage to go down the fascist path and actually secure the states that you need for the uh for the nordic empire it's over that is easily one of the most broken paths i think i've ever seen but everyone thank you very much for watching i hope you have a good rest of your day remember to like comment subscribe also if you want the dlc click my link down in the description because that is my code and if you do so it really helps me because all this comes from paradox and i really appreciate it when you all support me for these things thank you all my friends and goodbye.